For example, robots can help to perform high precision surgery that used to be too risky. Or artificial intelligence can help identify cancers that used to go undetected. And new vaccines could put an end to the pandemic and gradually free us from this virus. The impact of the so-called deep tech in our lives is more visible than ever before. Because of the pandemic, we saw years worth of innovation and digitalization in the space of just a few weeks. Businesses of all kinds have digitalized all or parts of their operations, from production to sales and customer care. And thanks to this, they are surviving the lockdowns. People who had never even ordered a pizza online have got used to all sorts of online services. And a huge event such as Web Summit can still gather tens of thousands of people, even if only a handful of you are in Lisbon right now. All of this has been possible because of people like you, tech pioneers and evangelists, those who are exploring the latest frontiers of innovation and those who bring technology in every home. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for making a positive difference in billions of lives. It is because of your incredible value that the tech sector is defying the negative trends in our economy. It is particularly true here in Europe. In 2020 alone, the value of European tech companies has risen by almost 50%. Europe's tech sector is attracting more international venture capital than ever before. In fact, Europe is attracting more capital for startups at seed stage than any other region in the world. The pandemic has been a catalyst and an accelerator of change. But these trends had already been visible for quite a while. In the last five years, the value of European tech companies has quadrupled. Europe has the highest number of top artificial intelligence scientists who are publishing their research in the best journals across the world. And there are more software developers here than in the United States. A handful of European startups, born in the early noughties, have become global leaders in their field. And the alumni of that first class have given birth to a new generation of companies across the continent. Europe's tech sector is coming of age, and Europe has all the potential to be a global leader in the next wave of digital transformation. And yet, we're still punching below our weight. For years, our digital businesses have dealt with way more obstacles than their competitors in other parts of the world. On the one hand, gaps in infrastructure and in the digital skills of our workforce and lower investment. On the other hand, regulatory complexity and bureaucratic barriers when trying to scale up beyond national borders. As a result, too many European startups have left our shores in order to grow. And today I would like to talk about how we are changing this so that the 2020s can finally be Europe's digital decade. First, new public investment. We want to bring the benefits of the digital transformation to all people and regions in Europe. Our recovery plan we call it Next Generation EU, is an unprecedented public investment to reshape Europe's economy. It is worth 750 billion euros, and 20% of it will fund digital investment. So Next Generation EU will help small businesses 
take up the latest technologies that are already available on the market. We will invest in the power of industrial data. 80% of data that our businesses collect are never used. And this is such a waste of a precious resource. So we will promote common data spaces, particularly in strategic sectors such as healthcare or energy. This will create innovation ecosystems where universities, companies and investors and innovators can have access to data and collaborate. To support this, we want to power up our digital infrastructure. We will invest in a new generation of European microprocessors and supercomputers that will stretch the boundaries of both performance and energy efficiency. And we will bring high-speed connections to all corners of Europe with 5G, 6G and fibre. Next Generation EU can upgrade Europe's infrastructure physically and virtually. This is a prerequisite for Europe's digital decade. But today I would like to give you a preview of a second set of initiatives which we are announcing next week. We are rewriting the rule book for our digital market and that for three simple reasons. First, we want that the values we cherish in the offline world are also respected online. At its most basic, this means that what is illegal offline should be illegal online too. And the law should be enforced. From selling unsafe products to sharing someone's personal data without consent to spreading illegal hate speech. No one expects digital platforms to check all the user content that they host. This would be a threat to everyone's freedom to speak their mind. But if illegal content is notified by the competent national authorities, it must be taken down. With easily accessible complaint mechanisms for those who contest this. And if you see an ad, you should know who placed it and why you are seeing it. So we need a solid foundation of basic obligations for all online players. At the same time, the largest social media platforms must have greater responsibility than a simple website or local marketplace. This will be the core of the Digital Services Act with greater power and social inference should come greater responsibilities, a responsibility not just to act when notified, but also a responsibility to assess the risks linked to the advertising system or their content moderation, a responsibility to be transparent about how those systems work a responsibility to accept scrutiny and audit, and a responsibility to cooperate with civil society and public authorities in addressing those risks. Second, I want companies to know that across the European Union there will be one set of core digital rules instead of a patchwork of national legislations and national regulators for the same company. When a Portuguese startup scales up beyond uh, the Portuguese borders in other European countries, it should not have to adapt to a whole new set of procedures and constraints. The European single market must also function in the digital world. Today, European countries are reacting to the new trends in the digital world with new national laws, so fragmentation is growing. Our Digital Services Act and the Digital Markets Act will change this. We are creating a single baseline set of rules for all digital businesses 
from Lisbon to Lapland. And finally, I believe in the power of free enterprise. I believe in an economy where we all play by the same rules and we all have a fair shot. All companies should be able to compete on a level playing field and it shouldn't matter whether they are the first to get on the pitch or newcomers. Big digital platforms from search engines to social media and online stores have made our life in lockdown much more bearable. They have allowed companies to stay afloat. They kept us in contact with the world and with our loved ones. They are profiting immensely from this and rightly so. But in a free market, it shouldn't be up to a private actor to decide if another company can exit the market and build its own success. Platforms cannot be the new Leviathan. With the Digital Markets Act, we are setting some basic boundaries to the power of gatekeeper platforms. For instance, they shouldn't discriminate in favor of their own services. And users should always be in control of their own data and be able to take it with them in a usable form. This is a matter of fairness. But it is also important that people like you can continue to innovate and to get as far as your talent will take you. Today, more than ever, we need visionaries who can experiment and think outside the box to exploit industrial data, to put artificial intelligence in good use, to bring solutions from deep tech to fruition for businesses and families. I want Europe to be a place where innovators can thrive, a place where startups can grow into giants and a place where young talents can bring their ideas to life. And for this, we will strive to invest in the right assets. We want to remove the obstacles that stand on the way of progress. Once a year, Lisbon becomes the global capital of innovation. Web Summit is a European pride. And it gives me hope that indeed the 2020s can be our digital decade. I thank you very much.